So let's go back to the sort of the basic unit of gene expression, which is a gene here shown in the uh, orange uh, arrow, uh, and the non-coding sequences surrounding it. And you'll see that now I've added a few more elements to this purple DNA. You see some symbols, a uh, blue square, a round circle that's pink, and then a yellow triangle. Those are just uh, a way for me to graphically represent the little bits of DNA sequences that I told you about that are the regulatory sequences. So the, the little round one happens to be very GC rich. The uh, triangle one is a classical element. Uh, that's called a Tata box. I'll tell you about a little bit later. And the blue one is yet another recognition element. So why are we so interested in these little stretches of, uh, of nucleic acid sequence uh, in the genome when it's buried amongst uh, billions of other sequences? Well, these individual little sequences turn out to be very important because of where they sit. You'll notice they're sitting near the top of the arrow. Uh, and they are recognized by very special proteins, which are the transcription factors. So now I've shown you some symbols with little cutouts which fit into either the square, the circle, or the triangle. So transcription factors, at least one major family of transcription factors, are proteins whose three-dimensional structure is folded into a shape that allows them to recognize these short stretches of double-stranded DNA. Uh, in fact, largely through interactions with the major group of DNA, and I'll show you a structure of one in a little bit. So now it turns out that there are probably thousands of these transcription factors because the number of genes that we have to control, as I showed you, is in the order of 20 or 25,000 genes. And so it turns out that you need a pretty large percentage of the genome devoted to encoding these regulatory proteins in order for a complex organism like ourselves to survive. Then the other component of this, uh, let's call it the transcriptional apparatus, is of course the enzyme that catalyzes RNA. And I already told you that this enzyme uh, on its own can't tell the difference between random DNA sequence and a gene or a promoter. These other sequence-specific DNA binding proteins are the ones that must recruit or otherwise direct RNA polymerase to essentially land on the right place and at the right time in the genome to turn on a certain subset of genes that are specifically required in a, in, in a specialized cell type, whatever cell you happen to be looking at. So that is kind of the first level of complexity of sort of informational interactions between the transcription factors and the more ubiquitous and I would call a promiscuous RNA polymerase II enzyme. Well, as it turns out, it took several decades to work out most, if not all, of the components of this so-called transcriptional machinery. Uh, and it turns out in this uh, slide I'm showing you, things are already starting to get more complicated. So not only do you have RNA polymerase, but you have a bunch of other proteins that go by names like T, F, 2, A, B, you know, D, E, H, F, and so forth. So it looks like there are going to be many, many proteins that are necessary to form the transcriptional apparatus. And then on top of that, you need sequence-specific DNA binding proteins, which I already uh, described to you, to further inform or otherwise regulate the process of when a particular RNA polymerase molecule should be binding to a particular gene.